We're going to squabble and we're going to bicker, but it's not going to be about money. We've eliminated one of the things I think that can tear a couple apart. For me, it goes back to the 50s. The man pays for everything. He has the job. Everyone else stays at home. So growing up in that sort of environment, that's what you learn. The expectation was the woman wasn't going to have a, a job. And that's so terrifying to me that I would be completely dependent on a man. That kind of got me thinking, OK, so maybe the 50s way of doing things isn't the right way of doing things. Part of feminism, I think, is not only women having financial independence, but what a burden I've always thought it was on a man to be the full-time breadwinner. And that's, again, going with this idea that feminism is about fairness. And it's beautiful when you can come together as 50-50. I do think that for some couples, it might be just a little bit of psychological reassurance that you're still your own person. You're not giving up your own identity in any way. Your life can be as it was before you married this person. In the past couple years, we've seen a shift, right? Now we have folks marrying older. You're seeing both people have their own identity, have their own stuff, have their own money. The general thing that I've been seeing is if you do decide to merge finances, you're still having your own separate money, but having a shared bank account for joint expenses. What we do is pretty radical because there's there's no joint account where we right. contribute to equitably. And we have sort of a running tally of expenses like the gas bill or the electric bill or a mortgage. And we each calculate our portion of it and then, okay, cough up your end of it. Why doesn't everybody do it this way? Keep it separate. And okay, it's a math problem once a month. This is a very practical thing. In fact, it's very unromantic, but it's, it's peace. I actually hope that you've had conversations about money way before you had a ring on your finger. And whether we like it or not, money is a huge part of our relationship dynamics. And we know that actually the number one cause of divorce or separation is money related issues. When we don't have those conversations with our partner, there can be points where we feel resentful. I love doing what I call a money date. Setting aside designated time for financial self-care. I look at, okay, how much debt do I have? How are my investments doing? Looking at my credit card statements. These conversations should be a positive way of deepening your relationship. If you don't feel comfortable having financial conversations with your partner, that is kind of a red flag. I don't want to sound as I'm an evangelist for it, but I just know what works for me and has worked for us until this point. We could resent each other about something here or there, but resentment is completely out of the picture in terms of money. <laughs>